Hey designers, welcome back to another episode of How to Draw Cars. Today we're going to launch a new series called How to Become a Car Designer. And we're going to start this series with a very, very special guest, someone who is in the middle of this process that we talk about all the time on the channel. And it's very exciting to welcome him. The first guest ever on the channel, Avi, wanted to introduce yourself. All right. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Mike. Uh, my name is Avi. I'm uh, 19 years old from San Diego. And I'm currently a student at Art Center College of Design in Pasadena. If you don't know, if you're someone who's living outside of the United States or outside of one of the design centers, Art Center is one of the preeminent automotive design schools in the world. But let's go back to the beginning, back in 2017. Give, me, give, give our audience, I'll be a little bit of background about what you were doing before this car design thing happened. Yeah, so I, I think I was in like, what, eighth grade at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't really know much about car design. I did like one summer course at Art Center just for fun in like 2016. And after that, I'd just be like, you know, bored in math or Spanish class or whatever. And I, I'd just be sketching just because I, I was just like bored in class. So I remember when I first met Abby and we started talking about cars. I thought I knew a lot about what was out there. He pulled out his phone and he, he had every car. Anything that was happening in cars and car design, he had it on his phone. He's definitely a car guy. Abby had gas in the veins from the moment that I met him. And would you agree, Abby? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> so when, at that point, you're 14 years old, when did you start to take this a little bit more seriously? I don't really remember exactly if there's ever a light that just went on. I mean, I would just be like, like I said before, I was just bored in like my classes in middle school and I'd just be sketching cars and I'd just be like, you know, I'm really enjoying this. Might as well just, you know, take it a step further. And were you watching like videos on the internet? At this stage, no, I actually wasn't. I was just like, I was, I guess I was kind of just doing things on my own at that point. Obviously at one point your dad contacted me and said, Hey, my son is interested in this. Is, is that something that you sat down with your dad and said, hey, dad, I really think I want to see what this is about. How did that conversation between you and your father happen? Do you remember? I can barely remember it, but <laughs> it, it went something like that. Uh, I'd say he just sat me down and was like, you know, is this something you really want to do? And at that point, there wasn't really anything else I was too interested in. So I was like, you know, might as well give it a shot, see how this goes. And seeing how it's going so far, it went pretty well. And so we started working together and I was, you know, we started on the basics, right? Kind of fundamental stuff. At some point we started to talk about contests. I believe we started off with the GM design contest 2017, like late 2017. So we did a submission for that, correct? Yeah. So it was just to design a flagship Cadillac. And at that stage in time I wasn't really that interested in Cadillac so this one was kind of like you know a weird start for me I remember I was really into like Lamborghinis at the time so I wanted to do this like supercar that was like super like angular and all that and what I came up with was kind of strange at the same time because I remember I had this weird package layout where the back seats were like at an angle facing outwards and I was trying to implement that all at the same time and you know it was all a new experience for me but Avi did some amazing packaging work uh, way beyond his years as people even that are, you know, older than you that I work with really get this idea about how packaging affects the form. Oh, it definitely opened up my eyes a bit and more like how car form worked, you know, especially working with what's underneath the body and all that. So 2019 rolls around and then we have the Chrysler Drive for Design contest. Yeah. Tell everybody what, what the project was. So for this project, we had to design a flagship for any uh, FCA brand at the time because it was still FCA, not Stellantis. I was initially, I remember I was initially going to do an Alfa Romeo supercar, but then I thought, you know, well, isn't everyone else going to do the same thing? Because, you know, Alfa Romeo, in my opinion, at the same time was the most interesting brand uh, owned by FCA. So I decided Lancia. It's a forgotten company to most of the world. I mean, they only make cars in Italy. So why don't I just make a launch rally car? Because they haven't done one in ages. So yeah, that's what I ended up going with. Abby presented the idea uh, during one of our classes. And were you the only Lancia in the, pro in the contest? Do you remember? As far as I know, I didn't hear about anyone else doing a launcher. So yeah, I yeah, guess so. 
So Avi made, even at again, at a very young age, he made a very creative choice to pick a brand within their, within their portfolio that nobody else would probably do. Speak about what it was like to put that presentation together when the deadline was coming around and you were scrambling. That was a pretty exciting time as well. That, that time was pretty interesting because people were starting to upload their own work for the competition. And I realized it was all Photoshop and I was the only one still using like what Copic markers and chalk right. on tracing paper. I really wanted to like make myself stand out. So I created this like weird layout and it was my first attempt at a layout as well. So yeah, that was, and I was doing it all like in my school as well, because <laughs> I was just scrambling that much. Any like spare time I'd have in like my AP history class, I'd just pull up my laptop and be working in the background. So it's the same thing like you were doodling cars and math, except now you were doing it digitally. But it's basically yeah. the same idea, right? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. That's what it takes, everybody. You're doing the contest, but you also have your normal school program. What was that like to try to balance those two things? I mean, it was pretty hectic. Uh, it definitely helped me balance stuff better. Yeah, it was definitely weird to manage at first, especially once I started taking art center at night classes. That and then balancing, you know, because my workload would get higher, especially as I got into like junior year and all that. It was definitely tough at times, but, yeah. you know, I got through it. You know, you're 15, 16 years old trying to juggle all this work. That's time management skills, right? Does that help you now? Is that a skill that you have that you're applying in your experience at Art Center today? Yeah, it definitely helped. So let me get to 2020 and we have two contests that you're eligible for, eligible for, correct? The Dunning contest and then the Chrysler Drive for Design the following year. And then, so tell us about the Dunning contest and what you did for that. So for Dunning, this one was also interesting because they, they specifically said no Photoshop. So it was a big stress off my shoulders, <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to do like, you know, what I wasn't able to do the previous year in uh, the FCA competition. So I wanted to do, you know, an Alfa Romeo supercar. So what I did was I designed an Alfa Romeo Speedster and I tried to use color on this one using just Copic markers and an airbrush, which I've never even used before. And it was definitely a new learning experience for me trying to render something in another color because I've never worked with color up, up until this point. So what happened? You submitted this thing and, and, and what was the response from the, from the judges? So I actually was selected as one of the 15 winners, which is great. I finally won something. What did you win, basically, other than so, getting you saying, hey, you, you were one of the winners? So originally, we were supposed to go to Detroit and do like a four-week course at CCS, a full design process ending with a clay model. But just as like the design was ending, COVID hit. So that all went in the bin, and we had an online course instead. Feel the online course was still valuable to you? Uh, definitely. It helped me get my proportion down a lot better, uh, especially because following that, uh, I'd start making my own portfolio to submit to, you know, Art Center, CCS, all those schools. Right. And that's something that we had talked about the whole way through, right? The whole goal was to, when you were ready, you would have this amazing portfolio to present to a top design school, whichever one you wanted to go to, through doing all these projects and entering the contest. The contests did make great portfolio projects, correct? Would yeah, they definitely did. You come to 2021, you're going to graduate. Is that correct? You graduated from high school in 2021? Yep. yep. And you do one more contest. We, we did the Chrysler Drive for Design, correct? Yeah. Tell us about that project. All right. So this one, we had to do a Jeep. This one, yeah, this one was interesting as well, because I'm not the biggest fan of Jeeps at this time. So <gasps> it was... Sorry, Michael. <laughs> it was for another reason, not design-wise, don't worry. Because Jeep has such like, you know, iconic design language. How do we take this and then push it into the future? Yeah, tell me about so, it. Yeah, exactly. So uh, what I ended up doing is, how do I put this? It was like, what, like kind of like the Hummer, I'd say. I don't even remember if the Hummer was out by then or not. No, I don't think so. It was kind of like the Hummer, uh, what's it, the, the pickup truck. Yeah, the new Except, one. Except uh, the back part of the car would like, you could remove it and it would become like a pickup truck or you could put it back on. And it would be a kind of like a bed cover, I'd say. And that was, was like modular. the main selling point. Yeah, exactly. Modular. Yeah. Very cool. And that was like the main selling point of the, of the design. I don't know what you'd call this part as well. I know Chevrolet nicked my idea after this. Uh, <laughs> but it's like, I guess they call it like the mid gate or whatever that separates yeah. the cabin from the bed. And right. that's like, you could fold that down. 
I know uh, Chevrolet does this for the Silverado EV, which came out later. Yeah, that was like the main selling point of this design. I tried to make the entire car revolve around this function because at the time, no one else did it. Yeah, the rest of the project was just a culmination of like, you know, all the other projects and competitions I did and where I learned from that. And I just threw it all into one thing and prayed for the best. And the result was? Fourth. Fourth. Oh. <laughs> and and I think the barely Chrysler- missed out. Yeah, the Chrysler only has first, second, third, right? They don't have yeah, a, a whole list. To me, what I saw in that project was like you exactly what you just said. All of your skills started to come together. I thought this is going to be a great project for your portfolio because it shows the growth that you're, that you're achieving. The other thing that was important about it too was that it was really problem solving. You were trying to start to solve problems versus just making something pretty. Yeah, and it was also, I think... One of the first projects I was able to successfully use like Photoshop to something I was satisfied with at the end. You're in your senior year. You have to put these applications in right before you graduate. You have to start applying. Is that correct? Yeah. We shifted gears from doing contest projects or like tailored course projects to working specifically on putting together the best portfolio. So what other schools did you look at besides Art Center? Uh, I applied to University of Cincinnati because they also have a transportation design program and uh, CCS. Okay. And you got accepted at CCS? I got accepted into, the, into both of them. And you got a scholarship from both or from CCS? Yeah. Okay. And then, but you also applied to Art Center as well, correct? Mm-hmm. And you got an, a scholarship to Art Center? All three. Yeah. yeah. Hope everybody heard that loud and clear. Not only did he get into three of the top design schools, but he got a scholarship to all three. It was a merit scholarship based on the quality of your work. Is that correct? Yeah. And that speaks to the thousands of hours that you put in during your high school years to to make this dream come true, to get into a top school, would you say? Yeah, it all paid off. So you get to Art Center, walk us through the first semester and the second semester. What was that like? Yeah, so it was definitely uh, surreal at first. A lot of people say, oh yeah, Art Center, it's really hard, really demanding. Don't take that for granted. It really is hard and demanding. (laughs) It definitely caught me off guard at first because a lot of it I thought was just down to poor time management. But honestly, if you manage your time well, you're still going to be working a lot. Everyone's pretty talented, at least who survives to the end of, or at least halfway through first term. Yeah, it's like being in a design and like a design competition that lasts that lasts like what 14 weeks. It yeah. it's intense, but you and, and you learn ahead. so much and you improve so fast. It's crazy. And you're one of the youngest people in your class, correct? I'm like the second youngest, yeah. How many students are in the class? I didn't count. It wasn't many. I mean, our department's not the biggest in the school. It does shrink. Like people do drop after like the first week because it's too much. In the first week. Wow. Okay. I was sharing with Abi um, that the program is really designed to weed out the folks that don't have what it takes. Ultimately, it's, it's, you can't do all the work that they give you. It's impossible. And they know that. The idea is to throw you into the deep end of the pool and you got to swim out of it. That's the idea. And would you say that that's been your experience so far? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Yeah, especially when you first start out, it's like that seems overwhelming. I mean, once you get to like the upper terms, or at least past second term, you look back in hindsight, and first term is really not that bad. But you get used to the workload increasing. So it doesn't feel as bad later on as it does when you just start off. And so has that been the hardest part so far It's just been the amount of things that they throw at you? Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. I mean, uh, finals week is probably the worst part. I know, uh, like second term finals week, we have to do these clay models. And I could send you a picture where I was working on. And I'd say that took up so much time. And you also have to like finish up, you know, a DP2 class where you have to finish up like a whole project and present that. And sometimes to presenting to like really notable people in the design industry. Like I think for midterms, they brought in Chris Bangle and we had to present our work to him, which was pretty crazy, actually. Yeah, yeah. That's a guy that you grew up, you know, flipping through your phone, looking at his stuff, right? Yeah, it it, it definitely feels overwhelming. But once you get like, you know, it's the upper terms, you look back and it's like, you know, it, it was all worth it in the end.
you mentioned Photoshop, but what I wanted to ask you is all the things that we went over in all the projects that we did together and all the concepts that I taught, did those concepts and the ideas, ground reflection, sky reflection, that stuff, that all, how does that translate? Can you speak to that? The tools that you use are really different, but the concept that you apply, it's basically the same. When we first started off in uh, Viscom 2, we were literally told just render like how you would with marker. Yeah, that got us pretty far. So. What about who you are makes you believe that you're going to be a good car designer? I'd say the passion, the uh, determination. I wouldn't say anything else, to be honest. And, and that passion, has it grown stronger as you've taken these steps forward in your career? Definitely. And it's something that's also pretty heavily emphasized right when you get to Art Center. I had a teacher in first term named Richard Petruska. I'm pretty sure a lot of people know about him. The first thing that he told us when we walked into that room is, if you don't have the passion, you're not going to make it anywhere. You really have to have that drive and the passion to be successful in this industry. And would you say the passion is what gets you through those 20-hour days? I mean, have you ever felt like giving up? Have you ever, has that ever entered your mind? Uh, that's something that I think enters everyone's minds at Art Center with the amount of work that you have. Honestly, you just have to remind yourself what's after this, you know, because after this, you know, Art Center is what, only a couple of years. After that, you're in the industry. That's when the fun begins. Yeah. So have you thought about where you'd like to be after Art Center? My dream after Art Center is to work at like Porsche or Mercedes. So if, if anyone from Porsche or Mercedes is watching this video, uh, take a look at my portfolio, please. <laughs> but yeah, no, I really want to work in Europe after this. I think it's just a great place to work. And I love the cars that come out of there. So at least let's other, hope. And the great thing about a company like Mercedes is they have arms going off in every direction. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do crazy stuff, they got AMG. And they, they even have the Formula One team, right? I mean, it's, that's pretty cool. They have their electric car division that you could work out and do things like that. So and they got trucks, right? If you wanted to do trucks for a year, you, hey, move me over there. And they have studios all over the world. They have a studio right down the street from where we live. Yeah. And, and how funny would that be to get hired by the Germans in Germany and they get sent to, <laughs> to North County, right? Right here. And you could sleep in your own bed every night. Why don't you tell the audience where you're at in your art center journey exactly? I mean, this is being filmed on what? Uh, Thursday. I start my third term at art center on Monday. So. Oh, wow. Okay. So, so you're headed back up this, this, this weekend? Yeah, this weekend. I can give you my Instagram and people can message me on there if they have any questions. Yeah. So what we'll do is um, we'll put all the links to Abby's contacts to his socials in the description. And uh, you can follow Abby on, on his socials and keep up with his progress through uh, the cauldron of art center as yep. uh, he goes through it and, uh, and does some amazing work. Hopefully the audience uh, got a lot out of it and we'll talk soon. Thanks, Abby. Yeah. Thank you, Michael. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Abby on the process of becoming a car designer. If you'd like to get tutored just the way he did, you can write to me at Michael at how to draw cars.net. And please include some samples of your work so I can see where you're at on your creative journey. You can also go to howtodrawcars.net and take a look at the tailored course program for more information. Thanks for watching.